Hey guys, it's going to see again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to walk you through the procedural generation implementation that we had. I'm actually going to be creating something from scratch. I'm going to show you something very basic that I did to, to basically show you how to create something like this. And I'm going to walk you through some of the structures and how we can generate a procedural building. So this one right here, it's the final version and I'm probably going to get to this, but it's going to take, you know, a couple of videos until we get to something like this. So what I want to do today is I just want to show you how we can start building something very basic and then going from the basics all the way to, to something more complicated like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and close out of this project, which is one of the projects that I'm working on. And then I'm going to show you a new project that I created that I'm going to be putting in GitHub. It's called the Unity Builder Generator. And, and this one is very basic. I'm going to, like I said, I want to show you the data structures, how we can create something like what I show you, and then how we can build to, to get to that point, right? So what I have right now is I have a sample scene. It's just a very basic scene with a ground. That's the ground that you see. It's a circular ground. And then what I'm going to do, do is I'm going to be positioning basically blocks and walls around and in a great manner. So right now, if I were to run this, you're going to see that it's, it's very, very basic. I'm just basically creating, you know, creating a structure with that simulates, you know, kind of like a building. But I'm placing things in a way that, you know, they're going to represent a building. So if I go ahead and hit play and to stop it, I'm going to go ahead and get closer here so I can show you. So this procedural generator is, uh, like I said, it's a very basic one. This takes in a wall. It also takes in a roof. You can tell it whether to include a roof or not. So I'm going to check this so that you guys can see. You can tell it what the width is, what the height is. So I'm going to just set it to one and one. I can also specify the cell unit size. That's how big the rooms are going to be. Also, the number of floors. So you saw that the number of floors was actually really tall building. So let's go ahead and keep this at one. And I want to show you what this does when I when I make those changes. So if you see, it's just you know it's a box. There's really not not much into it. But each each one of these boxes are really important because this is what's going to build the buildings that we're generating. It creates. Uh, if you look at the wall, it creates four different walls. So so the way that this is this is coded, it's this is this represents a room, and each room has four walls. So I position the walls depending on a pivot point. So if you look at if you look at the pivot point of this wall, for instance, right now is, if I look at here, it's basically set, and I'll show you that. Let me go ahead and stop it. I'm just going to show you the these three different examples and of the wall. So if I look at this wall right now and I were to, you know, I were to change the actual rotation, you're going to see that the wall is going to, is going to be set at this location. So if I were to remove these three, and then let's say that I add another wall, and I change the rotation to be 90, so that's going to be placed perfectly on, on that side. If I were to rotate, they actually duplicate it, and then put 180, it's going to be placed on the opposite side of the first wall. And if I do one more wall, and I place it at a negative number, which is going to be negative 90, you can see that we have a perfect square. I mean, it's not perfect, but it simulates you know, from far, you won't really see these details. And these are actually really cool details that when you build something big, it's not going to look bad. And then the other thing that I can also do, let's say that I want a floor. So now if I want a floor, I can uncheck this. You can see that the floor gets perfectly positioned. I'm not changing the position. As you can see, all the position on all these ones are zero. Everything is just based on the pivot point. So what happens is if I go to the floor simple and we look at the position of the floor, the rotation of the actual object is negative, you know, negative 90. So if I were to change that to zero, you're going to see that now that changes. I also have, so that's basically where it's starting. So when when you're working on, on things like this, some procedural generation, you want to make sure that you you freeze your position, your transformation as much as you can and, and, and deal with, you know, the less numbers that you can deal with, the better. Like in this case, we have, you know, we're only dealing with rotation, so that's really easy to code if you're building a grid that is going to simulate, you know, a building, because all you're changing is really rotations when you're building a room. So a room is basically composed of these three, on these four walls. 
There's also more complexities because then you have to think about, okay, now that I have a room and let's say that I have another room, how do I actually remove the wall and that is between them? And, and you know, how can you make it so it looks realistic? And that's that's when it comes, you know, to look at rules and how we can we can implement some of those rules into the algorithm that I'm building. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this series. I want to get to a point where, you know, we're building this from the very beginning like I am right now. And then I want to show you some of the options and choices that we make through the, you know, through this playlist, which I'm really excited about. So let's go ahead and look at the roof as well. So in this case, if I want to add a roof, in this case, it doesn't really look like a like a real roof, but I wanted to simulate something that looks different than the other tiles. So this is basically going to be, you know, uh, an actual roof. And if we look at the rotation of these, of these components, this is also rotated at negative 90 degrees, and, and that's why I can position it on top. And if you look at these tiles right here, I'm also they also have their own position within, you know, within this root, this roof simple. So the object that is outside, all it is doing is just rotating on 90. And, and in fact, I could actually just keep that at, at zero, and then that, that would still work. It's just the look that I, that I was looking for. So let's go ahead and look at running the project one more time. And then in this case, I'm gonna do, let's go, go ahead and do a three by three grid and see what that gives us. So we're building a three by three, which is, which is basically gonna be nine. So we have, you know, nine different spots. And, you know, we're starting to create our foundation and we're starting to create walls. You can see that the, the edges that I was showing you, it actually looks good. If we look at it from the camera angle, it actually looks really, really cool. So let's say that we wanted to do, maybe instead of doing one floor, we want to do now two floors. So we just say, okay, let's go ahead and do two, two floors. Let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see better. Okay, so I think that's perfect. So now I have two floors. So we went from, you know, having a building that was just, you know, one story building to two story building. And if you can see that everything is positioned perfectly, we have also, you know, our grid that determines you know how many how many rooms we're creating so in this case we have nine rooms because we did a, we did a three by three grid so if i go back in here let's say that we want to do now we want to include a roof so i can just check that box and i can hit play and we can look in here and say okay oh wow this is actually looking more like a you know this is a box but it's simulating you know a building at some point in the future but for now it's just more looking like a box with a ceiling so let's say that we wanted to change the, the look and feel of the roof because we don't really like how it looks. So let's say that we wanted to do something where we just remove every other one here. And, and I'm to be honest, I'm completely making this up. I, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I think I think it'll look cool. And then what I can do is just, just add this material and then you know something like that that looks a little bit better. Maybe we just change the the actual width of some of these ones. Let me go ahead and go to local and maybe the center of each. There we go, that's what I was looking for. And then we can just change. I just wanna change it a little bit so it doesn't look repetitive on every single one of them. And it's gonna look repetitive, but not as much as it did before. So, you know, that's more of a industrial type roof. Now we can go back and then we have, we should have a different roof. So if I go here, we have include roof. I'm gonna hit play. And then you can see that now we have something that looks better, actually looks really cool. And, and you can see that it, you know, it, it's resembling more of a building and because we changed now how the roof looks like. So let's say that we wanna do something different. We want to, uh, instead of doing you know, two floors, we wanna do three floors and maybe the, the height is going to be fourth. So we don't make a perfect, you know, a perfect grid. This is gonna be a, a three by four grid. So if we do that and we regenerate this, now we're gonna see that, you know, it's now looking more like a factory, right? Because we have factories are, are longer. What if we do something like the height is three by six and we hit play and we can now see that, there we go. So we, we're, it's looking more like what we're, what we're looking for. So if we wanna go back and say, I want to do this, and I want just one floor. I just want this little tiny, you know, factory. And maybe it's one of those places where, where you can you can deposit your stuff and they can save it for you. So you get the idea of what we're building. So let's go ahead and look at the code and see how I have everything implemented right now. So I'm gonna go into project and then we're gonna be double clicking on the procedural generator. 
and look and see what we have right now as far as the code so let me go ahead and close all others and we're going to be focused on let's go ahead and focus on some of the the models that represent what we were looking at so at the at the most simplistic you know data data set which is going to be the wall we have a wall right so we have a wall and, and the reason why i call this wall normal is because a wall can be you know can have a window can have a balcony can have maybe it's a it's a double door or a single door so in this case it's just going to be a normal wall because i, I want to keep it simple and then i also have a public property here that determines what the wall type is in this case it's going to be you know it's this is a default initializer and it's basically setting the wall type to be normal and then the constructor you set it you know the default if you don't specify a parameter in the constructor it's going to set it to normal and so pretty simple right we just have a wall so what if we want to have now a room so a room like i said it, it's composed of multiple walls so now if i look and look at a room so as you can imagine a, a room has an array and this array represents all the walls that we have so normally we have four walls so right now i just didn't initialize it but i also wanted to keep track of the basically the position of the room and and to be honest i don't know that i'm going to i'm going to need this but we'll, we'll look at it in just a minute but i also have a position for the room i also have whether we we have a roof or not in this room because some rooms may not have a roof because we have another maybe we have another floor that you know another room above it in the second floor that where, where we don't when we don't want a roof right this is only going to be on the on the last floor on the very top of the penthouse when we're going to be putting a roof so that's why i did that that way the this room takes in basically a position it also takes in whether it has a roof or not and then i say those properties so that we have access to those and then i also have a public property that returns that position so now if we look at the floors the floors is also composed of multiple rooms and and the reason why this is a double uh, what's called a two-dimensional array is because it's it ba we have a, a basically too many right we have we could have a grid that has a width of three so this could be basically three different rooms and they could expand also to the depth of three so when you're creating a room we're doing basically a, a, a two-dimensional array there and then we also specify you know how many floors we have so i guess i want to track if we are on the first floor or if we're on the second floor and then this basically creates you know whether we have a room so what this is going to create behind the scenes is going to be something like this so i'm just gonna let me just make this because i think this is gonna this is gonna make it more so let's say that we wanted to do something that had you know it was a three by three array right so we're gonna do it would look something like this behind the scenes and and i i like visuals because it, it makes me you know it makes me realize what's going on so i'm always working on a whiteboard and that really helps me understand so if i'm doing a three by three so let's say that i create an array that is going to be of size three comma three this is what the data structure is going to be if it was an integer array right in this case it's going to be an array of objects so what's going to happen is zero it's going to represent a room zero is going to represent another room and then and then and so on so that we're going to end up with nine different rooms because it's a three by three all right so the next thing that i want to show you is also the constructor we specify what the floor number is and then we pass in the double the, i keep saying double dimension but it's normally called two dimensional array and then we set the floor number which is right here and i also set the array that we have in here so let's go ahead and leave this here just for now and then if we if we don't need it i can delete it after and then the next thing that i want to show you is now that we look at floors that are composed of rooms and rooms that are composed of walls now let's look at the procedural generator which is actually putting everything together so i need to know what model what 3d model to actually use for the walls so that's what this is this is going to be the wall prefab i also need to know which model we're going to be using for the roof so that's what i'm passing in here and that's why these are serializable i also need to include whether i want to include a roof or not and that that's optional just for testing i don't know i might not use it i might use it but right now i'm using it and if i set it to false it doesn't create a roof if i set it to true it does create a roof and then this is going to be the, the size of the room two dimensional array that i told you so this is a three by three and this is a default i can change it on the inspector because these are serializable 
I can also specify the cell unit size, and I'm going to show you how that works. I can specify the number of floors. So if this was a 10 floor building, we can we can specify this as 10, and or we can set it through the inspector. I set it to one by the default, and then I also have an array of floors because we need to keep track of you know the floors that we have. So the next thing that I have in the awake method, I have two different methods. One is going to be the generate. So this is the one that is going to create a data structure. So I'm just going to say create data structure. And this is the one that is going to generate the prefabs, which is going to, it's called the, the render, but it's basically spawning prefabs at the locations that we tell the generate to create. So if we look at the implementation of generate, we need to specify, you know, how many, how, how many floors we're going to have. So this is where I'm initializing the floors. I'm passing in the number of floors that we're going to have so that I can initialize the array. I also have an integer that initializes the floor count. And then I have a for each that it's going to go through each one of those objects that I created in the array. So we're going to have, let's say that we had only one floor. This for each it would execute just once. But let's say that we have three floors, right? We want to go three times. So this for each will go, you know, zero, index zero, index one, and index two. And then it'll quit because we went through three iterations. So the next thing that I do here is for each floor, we need to we need to basically create a two-dimensional array because we need to actually create a space where we're going to be placing the walls, the floors, and also the roof. So that's what this is doing, is initializing the rooms, I'm specifying the width and the height, and then I have to do two for loops because I need to loop through each one of those. So I'm going to loop i, and I set it equal to zero, and then less than the width, and then I increment. And then I'm also going to loop through J and then, you know, making sure that it's less than the high, increment J++. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize rooms at IJ because it's going to allow me to access the grid. And I'm going to create a new room. The way that I'm that I'm creating a new room is I'm creating a new vector too. I'm passing in the value of I. I'm multiplying that by the cell unit size and I'm going to show you why. And also multiplying J by the cell unit size. The other thing that I do in here is the room takes a, a parameter, whether it has a roof or not. So if include roof is equal to true, what I'm going to do if, if the floor count equal, basically if it equals the max, then I'm going to be including a roof. If this value is set to false, I'm just going to return false. And that way we don't have to create a roof. And then what I do at the very end is now that I created the rooms and I have all the information that I need, I'm going to initialize the array of floors at that index. So in this case, it's going to be at index zero. That's going to be the first one. I'm going to create a new floor. I'm going to say, okay, give me index zero. I'm not going to increment it right here. I'm going to increment it right after. So the first time this execute, this is going to be zero. Rooms is going to be set because I already set them up in here. But in the on the next iteration, we're going to go through that same example. You know, I is going to be, I, I is going to be incremented. Well, this is going to be incremented through here, right? But when we go through the second floor, if we go to floor one, now what's going to happen, floor 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 count is going to be one. This is going to be one as well, and then it'll be incremented on the next iteration. So that's basically how I'm setting up all the rooms. Now on the next method is where I'm actually placing the prefabs. So I don't have to, I don't have to set up the rooms. Everything is already being set up. So what's going to happen is I'm still going to have to loop through each floor because I didn't want to include everything in this, you know, in this generate method. I want to have the generate doing the data structure and then render, actually doing the render work. So that's why those two are separated. So here I'm, I'm actually just, you know, looping through the floors as well. I'm looping through I, which is going to loop through the width. And I'm also looping through J, which is going to loop through the height. So that's going to allow me to access basically every cell. So what I'm going to do here is instead of, you know, instead of setting rooms, which I did here, I'm going to get the rooms because I already have the information and where they need to be placed. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the first wall, the first wall prefab. I'm going to use the, the wall prefab from the very top. I'm going to get the position of the room at X. I'm going to also set the floor number, which is going to be at the beginning. This is going to be zero. So this is going to be position at zero. And then I'm also going to get the position of the room position of Y. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quaternion Euler to rotate the walls specifically. The, the reason why I can do this is because they are all placed at a pivot point. So it makes it easier to place these walls. So for instance, on the first wall, I know the first wall is always going to be set at 000. Second wall is going to be a 90. 
third wall is going to be a 180 and then last the last wall is going to be a negative 90 and then what i'm going to do on each one of those walls i'm going to be i'm actually just making him a pairing of these objects that way they're not all in the as the you know as the root game object and then the other thing that i do is as i loop through i'm also checking okay if this room has a roof i'm going to instantiate that roof i'm going to set the position of the roof and then I'm going to just set the quaternion that identity because we don't need to do any rotation. And then lastly, what I do is I just set the roof that transform the parent to be a child of the procedural generator. So that's basically everything that we have right now. So if we go back into, into Unity here and we look at, let's go ahead and look at the cell unit size because we didn't look at that value. So right now the cell unit size is set to one. So let's say that I wanted to set it to, let's see what, what happens, right? If I hit, if I hit play, we already looked at it, but I think I wanna, I wanna show you that again. So what if I wanted to make that maybe twice as big and see what happens and then hit play. So now we have a separators. Now we can create mini buildings and it's gonna allow us to do a lot of cool things. So now what if I do go to progen and we, we change that the floors, we go, you know, twice as big now we can create mini buildings and they all uh, you know they're all spaced out so what if i want i don't want to go as far maybe we're going to go 0.5 instead of 0 1.5 1 actually and then you know they're, they're closer to each other or maybe we just do 1.1 maybe they're just you know maybe it's the same it will look like the same building but we just have a little bit of separation in between them we could also go a lot smaller than that and i could go 0.5 and then let's see what that let's see what that does and that actually creates a much smaller building there's a lot of collisions in between so i wouldn't recommend going going less but but i mean it, it just it just gives us flexibility so if i went if i if i go to something like i don't know 10 and we change this number to three and so when, when you start working with procedural generation it just gives you a lot of flexibility right now you have a game that you have little buildings everywhere and they're all procedural generator and that's kind of the key for this video series to show you how we can simplify procedural generation by creating tools that will allow us to to help us through that process so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys today if you guys have any questions please let me know